President Dr. Les Geis and Louisiana Tech Director of Athletics and VP Dr. Eric Wood. We want to welcome you to the Thomas Assembly Center for our Hall of Fame induction for the class of 2021. It's uh, taken us a year to get here. We were supposed to induct this fine group uh, last October, but COVID had other plans, so we pushed it forward, and we're so happy that everybody's here. We've got a beautiful crowd tonight. Uh, it's a special night, and we're looking forward to it. My name is Malcolm Butler. It's my privilege to be one of your MCs tonight. Uh, Teddy Allen, my good friend, uh, will be our other MC. Uh, now, if you know Teddy, Teddy's job is to make you laugh tonight, right? He's the funny guy. My job is to keep this train on the tracks and keep us on time. So somebody's got to do the heavy lifting. That's going to be me tonight. A couple of uh, housekeeping things I want to go over. Uh, if you have your cell phone on you, please turn it on silent right now. Uh, that way we're not interrupted throughout the course of the night uh, with cell phones. Uh, as the night goes on, if you need to use the restrooms, uh, the closest ones are located straight through the tunnel back there. Uh, as you go under the uh, canopy with the LaTeX logo, the men's is on the right, the women's is on the left. Um, food will con maybe food won't be continued to be served as I looked over there. But the good news is, and this announcement is mostly for Teddy, wherever he's at, the cash bar will close at 7.30. So uh, if you want a drink, you've got till 7.30. The Louisiana Tech Athletics Hall of Fame, just a little bit of information about that. Um, this is the 20th class ever inducted into the Louisiana Tech Athletics Hall of Fame. Uh, the first class was inducted way back in 1984, and it consisted of seven members. When we are through tonight with these five inductees, our class, or our group will be up to 118 strong. Uh, and again, what a great group it is. Louisiana Tech University has had an unbelievable tradition of producing great student athletes over the years. Uh, so over the course of the next 90 minutes, we look forward to inducting the class, and what a great class it is. Uh, we've got a two-time Southland Conference Pitcher of the Year, Mr. Richie LeBlanc and his family over here. Hey, Richie, wave to everybody. We have our first ever Louisiana Tech golfer going into the Louisiana Tech Hall of Fame. He's one of the top teaching professionals in the game of golf today, Mr. Roy Pace and his fan club sitting right here. How about a five-time track and field All-American who, in all honesty, looking at him tonight, he could probably jump across this stage still. Uh, Mr. Bryant Wesco and his posse sitting right here. Our next will be a sharpshooting Kodak All-American. She called this very gym home for four years in the 90s during her Lady Texter career. Miss Deborah Williams and her family and friends sitting right over here. And finally, a walk-on who turned into an NFL Super Bowl champion, Mr. Tremont Williams and his family, his wife, Shan, who was, of course, a stud for our Lady Texter basketball team all those years. By the way, I know we have some tech coaches here, and uh, I would start recruiting Trinity and Tremont Jr. immediately. They're probably the two most athletic in that household, and that's a pretty athletic household. So I've seen video of both those young people. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about how tonight is going to work. Um, Teddy and I are gonna both have, uh, have a conversation with our Hall of Famers. It's gonna be relaxed, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be informative. Uh, we're gonna talk to each one of them for about 10 to 12 minutes, let them share their journey. We've already talked to each one of them in advance, so we know what they would like to talk about, so we're looking forward to that. One note, this was supposed to be a six-person class. Uh, Ryan Allen was supposed to be part of this class. He's, of course, a two-time Ray Guy Award winner, uh, but he called last week and uh, found out the hard way that he's not 20 years old anymore. He uh, ruptured his Achilles playing pickup basketball, so he actually had surgery yesterday. So we are going to punt him did you get that? Punt him? That's one of my few jokes. We're going to punt Ryan to next year's class, and so he'll be inducted with the class of 2023. Listen, this is more of a ball game than a banquet. We want you to have fun, enjoy yourself, applaud for the Hall of Famers, laugh at Teddy's jokes, and we'll have a great time. Okay, our tonight's invocation will be given by Joe Murray. She's a member of the Louisiana Tech track and field team. She's the school record holder in the pentathlon. She's a Conference USA Commissioner's Honor Roll member, and she's president of the Louisiana Tech FCA. 
Following our invocation, please remain standing for the singing of our national anthem performed by Kiana Walker. Kiana is a first team all conference selection for the Lady Texture basketball team. Uh, not only is she a wonderful singer, as you will hear, but Deborah, you can appreciate this. She recorded the fourth triple double in program history last year against Rice, so she's pretty good on the hardwood as well. So uh, we want to thank both these young ladies for coming out and sharing their time and their talents with us tonight. So ladies and gentlemen, if you would, please rise and remain standing for our invocation and our national anthem. Please bow your heads with me. Father God, I thank you for the people gathered here tonight. Help us to give you the glory in all the things, knowing that our gifts and talents are from you, and apart from you, we can do nothing. I thank you for the celebrated men and women in this room. All that they have accomplished is from you, and they are so deserving of recognition. Thank you for your son Jesus and the fact that he defeated death on the cross by rising from the dead so that we might live in an intimate relationship with you. God, you are so rich in mercy, and it is only by your grace that we are saved. To your name be the glory. Bless these people and their families, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes in bright stars Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Kiana. Great job, ladies. And again, thanks for sharing uh, some time with us tonight. So uh, before we begin uh, our induction ceremony, a couple of other recognitions I'd like to make. Uh, Louisiana Tech President Dr. Les Geis and our First Lady, Miss Kathy, sitting right over here at table six. Let's give them a hand, please. Dr. Donna Thomas, who's our faculty athletic chair and our chair of our Hall of Fame committee, sitting at table six as well. <laughs> coach Mary Kay Hungate, we still call her coach, our deputy AD and senior woman administrator, Mary Kay. <laughs> and finally, uh, Tanya Oak Smith, she's the executive director of university communications. At this time, I would like to introduce our Louisiana Tech Athletic Director and uh, Vice President. He was uh, named both back on October 23rd, 2020. He's the first AD in Louisiana Tech history to also serve as a Vice President. Uh, since Dr. Wood was named AD back in October of 2020, Louisiana Tech has won uh, conference or division championships in both men's and women's basketball, in baseball, and in softball. Uh, maybe even more impressive than that is since he became AD, uh, Louisiana Tech's, their student athletes have gone 10 straight quarters with a cumulative GPA of over 3.0. That's hard to do when you have 350, 400 student athletes. So kudos uh, to not only Dr. Wood, but obviously our student athletes. Uh, he brought culture, class, and competitive excellence as his mantra to Louisiana Tech athletics. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Louisiana Tech AD, Dr. Eric Wood.
Good evening, everyone. How are we doing this evening? Good, good. It's good to see you here. And, uh, you know, I do want to make sure that I introduce my beautiful wife. Malcolm, uh, he was going to mention my beautiful wife, and I was going to change it to smoking hot wife, and he said, I can't say that, so you say that. So I'm going to go with my smoking hot wife. So good to meet uh, so many of you. It's good to meet our inductees. And, uh, you know, uh, with going on year two for, for me, I was, I was bummed out when we couldn't do this uh, last year. And, 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 you know, COVID is, just causes interruptions in, in every facet of our, our work and personal lives. So I'm, I'm really excited that we get to do this and to celebrate all that you've accomplished. You know, uh, as, as Malcolm mentioned, our student athletes and coaches and our administration and all of this under the leadership of Dr. Geis, we experienced some, some great uh, accolades uh, in the classroom and on our respective playing fields. Uh, but I'll tell you what, one of the coolest things I've had a chance to do, and I've had a chance to meet Terry Bradshaw and Kix Brooks and some of our alums, one of the coolest things that I've gotten a chance to do is to make these phone calls to our Hall of Famers. Uh, the, 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 the responses just truly reminded me of, of how important um, we play, you play, in our rich history. And uh, some tears, some laughter. I remember calling Tremont's house and hearing his wife say, oh my gosh, now I gotta deal with this. <laughs> he, he had me repeat it, he put it on speakerphone and said, uh, Dr. Wood, can you say that again? Uh, so it was a lot, a lot of fun uh, making those phone calls, but it's real, I'm really excited to be here. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. I extend again to the Hall of Famers, Richie and Roy and Brian, to Deborah, to your mom. I extend to you our, our congratulations on this uh, life achievement. And personally, I commend you for being a part of this Hall of Fame class and your commitment to competing at such a high level, again, in the classroom and on your respective fields of play. Despite the many challenges and trials that uh, all of our student athletes face over your four or five year career and however long you spent at Louisiana Tech before pursuing your next endeavors, uh, I'm sure there were trials and tribulations and adversity that you had to overcome. That's what makes student athletes great, the transferable skills from the experience here uh, into, our, into our careers. And so despite those you've encountered during your time at Tech, it was, that it was your demonstrated perseverance and the, the, the amount of the countless hours that you devoted to your craft. So I thoroughly enjoyed reading your quotes that uh, Malcolm and Teddy and Kane and the rest of our crew had been putting out slowly over the last couple of weeks as we celebrated you and uh, reintroduced you to the community as we uh, planned for this event. Uh, I enjoyed reading the, the memories at Tech, the friendships that you describe, um, and I look forward to hearing that in our conversations. I know those friendships will have lasted a lifetime. Many of you were in each other's weddings and you're seeing some old friends that came back to celebrate you. Um, uh, today is, is truly a milestone in your life's journey. While as a former student athlete myself, not at this high a level, uh, but I know that I don't remember all of the games and I know you won't remember every game. You may remember the, 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 the uh, a personal achievement, but what we remember most usually are those road trips or the hotel stays, or the locker room conversations, um, big exam that you passed, all of those things. There, there are many games we remember, but we remember the relationships. And so uh, I'm excited for you to, to be able to, to, to look back and, and, uh, and share with everyone else the impact that those relationships had during your time here, coaches, teammates, all of those, and hearing about your sense of pride and the accomplishments today. Um, I'll leave with this. I hope that uh, you know by now uh, that you will always belong to the Tech family. You will always be Bulldogs and Lady Texters. I hope you remember uh, how valuable your degrees are from this world-class institution and a powerful alumni network. And most importantly, I hope you felt prepared to take on the world when you left here. I hope this place, I hope the experience prepared you uh, for, the next, for the next step. Congratulations. Um, Go dogs, go Letty Texters, and ever loyal me. How about a hand for my smoking hot AD and my smoking hot co MC? Hey, I'll be efficient with my remarks. Me and Dr. Wood are supposed to be in Bozier. 10-15 to get a tattoo. <laughs> we don't want to. We don't want to be late. I want to thank the university for allowing me the opportunity to be a part of this moment. 
with the class of 2021. I want to thank them, uh, Richie and Roy and Bryant, Deborah, Tremont. I mean, I mean, Tremont. Thank you so much for the uh, the poise you've had during your career, uh, the class you've shown, and the gifts that you've worked hard to perfect. Uh, it's brought all of us a lot of joy. It's brought a lot of pride to your family, to your friends, to your university. And we, we just thank you for it. God bless you for it. And we are all happy to celebrate you tonight. If you get into the Tech Hall of Fame, you've gained some pretty rare air because you can't swing a cat around here without bumping into some superstar. So uh, we are happy for you. Uh, our first inductee, let me introduce him to you. His career, he started pitching and hitting for the St. Pius Saints down in the cutthroat Catholic Little League of Lafayette Parish. They wore white, blue jeans, uh, t shirt. He ended up in the Kansas City farm system. Uh, and in between, he found a home on the mound at Love Field, and we're sure glad he did. State champs they were for St. Thomas More. First year of the school was a school, set the bar pretty high uh, for St. Thomas More when he was a junior. He was voted the hardest worker on the team. He was a pitcher, losing, uh, pitcher of the year in Louisiana. Thank goodness they did not go by height. Uh, he was only 5'8". At Tech, he was a two-time Southland Conference Pitcher of the Year. And the mound stud on a great staff on back-to-back -back NCAA regional teams. They did everything together. Probably the best thing they did together was play baseball. Richie LeBlanc, he's been 5'8", and he'll tell you, and a half. His whole, his whole life. Uh, he started out in kindergarten that size, and God love him, he just never, never really got bigger. Uh, he weighed maybe 165, maybe in a Bulldog uniform, but he had something inside that was just so fierce and untamed. It just made him a master on the mound. Uh, he's tonight's first inductee from the class of 2021. He's a Lafayette transplant, and thank God that we stole him here in Ruston. Please welcome our friend, Richie LeBlanc. spring of 1987. There's no way you can encapsulate that in a few words, but you can try, starting with the Hutchison dorm room 135. What was the experience like? Well, my roommate here is Jeff Schwanner. We, we lived in that same room for three years, and it was bad when we got there. Right. <laughs> they finally tore it down, thank goodness. But, uh, you know, Malcolm said something about the hall being established in 1984, and when, when we arrived on campus uh, in September. Our first meeting was, uh, are you telling me it's time already? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're in the first inning. Go. <laughs> the first meeting we had, we had 19 new faces on the team, and we were down here in the Hall of Fame room, and never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined being sitting up, or sitting up here tonight talking to you. What was special about that team? I mean, y'all are obviously good with back to back regional, something that Lane trained and the guys have duplicated, but not until the last couple of years. You've told me how special that team was. Uh, so what was it like for you and how could you describe it to everybody? I would say when we came on campus, we just, we absolutely gelled as, uh, as very close friends. The relationships we built uh, were just very, very special. And, you know, Coach Patterson and Coach Kane, they let us play ball. And, and we did, and a lot of us played summer ball outside of Louisiana and came back with a lot of, a lot of instruction, a lot of knowledge, and we just employed that, and it, it just worked. It worked. Okay, well, Rich, you're, like I say, a lot of people have talked about your stature, but when you were on the mound, you were just a, 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 you were just a cutthroat competitor, which nobody would know if they met you today. Uh, no discussion of the 70s or 80s in baseball would be, of tech baseball would be uh, complete without talking about Pat Patterson. Uh, Gravy signed you. You were uh, a torrent on the hill. When he came out to get you out of a game and you didn't want to come out of a game, what were some of those conversations like? 
Well, I think I was pretty clear, but uh, anyone that knew Gravy, it kind of sounded like to hear you. Yeah. That's, My understanding, that's all he would say. But you didn't know if he wanted you to come out of the game or keep it? I didn't know. I didn't know. He, uh, he, he talks real deep, and, or he did, and, and just wasn't real clear when he got excited. And, I never, it, it never was a good conversation. Yeah. And no, I know you, you, you forget wins and losses and that kind of stuff. I, if I asked you who y'all played this day, you wouldn't know. You would have the day after. But you will always remember gravy. Uh, one good gravy story, maybe the frog story. So we were playing up in Arkansas State, and it, back then we played doubleheaders on Saturday. And we, we played the first game of the doubleheader. I pitched, you know, worked out well. And we were in the second game of the doubleheader. And for those of you who knew Gravy, he wore this blue windbreaker. And he was leaning up against the dugout. And uh, we hit, there was this frog in the dugout. And I grabbed it and uh, slid it into his pocket and, uh, and really forgot about it. And about two or three innings later, he, he walked out to the mound. And he stuck his hand in that pocket and uh, absolutely went ballistic. And I think we were winning the game about 12 to nothing, and they, Arkansas State came back to tie the game, and I think he blamed the whole thing on me. Y'all won. We won. We won. The game. He was not happy. And, uh, but, yeah, again, he was a big practical joker, but that, uh, I think I almost gave him a heart attack. He was so beautiful, and he, he drove him and Mike Kane did to Lafayette, 3.30 in the morning, signed Richie the day after he graduated, and a couple hours before Richie left on the senior trip. He was at the Howard Johnson's in Lafayette. Howard Johnson's in Lafayette. He, uh, I told him I'd sign when I got back um, from Florida on our senior trip, and he, uh, he said, no, I'm going to come down and, and sign this evening or in the morning, and they did, and, and thank goodness because there was a few other schools that called that next day uh, that I don't know what I would have done, but it was... It all worked out really well. Yeah, it did work out. It scares me what you might have done if you'd have gone to another school. I'm sure it scares you because this place ended up being your home. Uh, why do you tell people that that sucked? It, it, it was. I mean, the, the baseball, J.C. Love Field, um, you know, the tornado took out the, the ballpark that I played in, but it was, a, uh, it was a place where you could escape everything that was going on in the world, uh, you know, bad grades, whatever the case may be. And, but more so than anything, um, when I came to Tech, you know, I met my wife. You know, I read Tremont's uh, article the other day about how his wife played a little hard to get. And, and I'll tell you, I mean, it was, I'm talking about two or three years before she finally said yes. Yeah. So, but uh, we've raised our family here in Ruston, uh, live here today. And, and thank goodness the, the, the Hunt family, Trot Hunt's back there, but they bought us back from Seattle recently back in 16, and, and we're glad to be in Ruston. Yeah, and you weren't gone long, uh, thank the good Lord. So we can't leave without a couple more things. The LSU game in 87, uh, 50,000 people were there. They claim to be today. The Bulldogs won it 5-4. to four. Montoya hit the homer in the 10th to win it. Richie pitched all 10 innings. Uh, when people bring up that game, what do they uh, say to you? Well, to Teddy's point, I think there were 50,000 people that thought they were there, but... They'll ask, you know, so you play baseball at Tech? I said, yeah. I said, well, well, I was at an LSU game. And, and I said, yeah, I, I was there. Um, and they'll say, well, <laughs> did you play? And I said, yeah, well, I, was, I, I pitched. I, my name is Richie LeBlanc. And it's kind of like I was asked tonight several times, which picture up here was you? And, uh, but they look me up and down, and it's like, no, I wasn't you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I felt 6-7 on the mound, and uh, yeah. we, had, we had a great team. I mean... Some of them are sitting there, Sam Moore, Steve Davis, and Kenny Gio and Jeff Schwanner are sitting out here today. And again, the relationships that we had and established back then, just unbelievable today. Yeah, it's a different time. F.J. Taylor, the president then, used to actually sit in the dugout with y'all. And one time you came into the dugout and he said, hey, what's the deal? And he actually did your homework for you. Well, actually, so we were playing a ball game, and uh, Dr. Taylor would come in the dugout and sit with us. And I was out pitching, so came in, and for those uh, athletes were very superstitious. And he was sitting in my spot in the dugout. And I said, Dr. Taylor, if you don't mind, would you slide over just a little bit? You're in my spot. And he did. And he said, uh, so how's it going? I said, oh, the game's fine, but I've got to write a speech tomorrow. And he said, what's it on? I said, just a general speech, you know, just something to talk about. And we... Three outs were made. We'd go out and pitch and, and, and play the, the top half of the inning. I came back. And I keep this in my drawer. 
and this is the original speech that he wrote, um, and it has, there's five points to this speech, and I'm not going to read all five of them, but uh, the, the one that I would say is that, you know, some of the greatest lessons in life um, come out of sorrow, heartache, and suffering. And then the last one here um, is recognize God as the one greatest influence in, one, in our lives. Pray for his guidance and thank him for all the blessings that he has bestowed upon you. You know, I, I do. I keep this in my drawer at work, and I've used it in Sunday school lessons. I've used it as, a, uh, as kind of a, a, a blueprint to try to live my life. And it's, it's like I said, it's special. And that was, a, that, was a, that was a good thing that he did that day. Dr. Taylor was a, a, a wonderful gentleman, uh, of course, started the Lady Texas basketball team. Dr. Geis, I got some math questions for you when we get through with this. Before we close, uh, your teammates, again, we, I, I've had many conversations with you about them, but uh, to thank them for you being here tonight, because they were a really good bunch of guys, but still, y'all have been friends for 35 years now. Oh, yes. I mean, we, we're still pretty close. Uh, we stay in touch. You know, these days, communication is pretty easy with text messaging and whatnot. So, uh, and, and we went through a tough time in my family's life. We, my son was sick, and he's with us here tonight, we, and we're, we're thankful for that, as is my daughter and my son's wife. But uh, it, it, they reached out quite a bit during that period of time and offered a lot of help and uh, encouragement. And we're, we were so thankful for their, their support. Richie's mom brought him up here in the fall of 84 uh, when they passed the city limit sign south coming in from Johnsboro. They saw the rust in city limit, and Richie said, I'm home. And uh, he didn't know at the time, but he really was. So thank goodness he is. Ladies and gentlemen, Louisiana Tech Athletics Hall of Famer, Dynamite in a small package, Richie LeBlanc. And congratulations to all of you other inductees. Teddy was the funny one. Um, our next Louisiana Tech inductee uh, grew up in Longview, Texas. I prepped at Judson Grove High School. He's a 1963 mechanical engineering graduate of Louisiana Tech University. There is his days as a, a golfer for the Bulldogs. Uh, he was the three-time Gulf States Conference individual champion. That's pretty impressive to do that three straight years. He was a member of four Gulf States Conference team championships, so every year his team won it. He went on and spent 10 years as a PGA professional. That's the longest stint ever by a Louisiana Tech golfer. He won one PGA Tour, 1971, the Magnolia Classic in Hattiesburg. He had 15 top 10 finishes on the PGA Tour. His pro career, 225 pro tournaments. He made 163 cuts. That's pretty impressive as well. Five U.S. Opens, one U.S. Senior Open. He made the cut at three majors, the 1971 U.S. Open, the 1974 U.S. Open, and the 1974 PGA Championship. That's a pretty impressive career, but I tell you what, if you talk to the people around him, they'll probably tell you that his biggest contribution as a club pro and a teaching professional in Texas, Florida, and Connecticut, and what he's meant uh, to young people, old people, people who just want to go out and hit that white ball. By the way, Roy, when we're done, I'm going to get some tips from you, please. Uh, he was ranked, uh, has been ranked in the, one of the top 50 golfing instructors in the country for 10 years by Golf Range Magazine. He's a member of the Connecticut Golf Hall of Fame. And as I mentioned earlier, folks, the first Louisiana Tech golfer to ever be inducted in the Louisiana Tech Athletics Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome our newest La Tech Athletics Hall of Famer, Mr. Roy Pace.
Boy, first of all, congratulations again. What does it mean when you hear that? You're the first Louisiana Tech golfer, and that, that golf program's been around a long time, ever inducted into the Louisiana Tech Athletics Hall of Fame. It really, uh, really kind of shocked me. It took me back. Uh, first one, I mean, I just can't imagine that. Uh, one of the nice things it did, I think it took me back to kind of remember and appreciate the people that helped me through the years. You know, from my parents to uh, a teacher, uh, Coach Aye. Coach Aye was my golf coach here. And uh, he was a big influence. When I went on the tour, the pros, the friends I made. I'd like to thank my wife, Sandy, and our family. Being a golf pro isn't that easy, but it, it, it made me go back and realize these things. And uh, also very important, my students through the years. That means a lot to them and to me for this. Tell us a little bit about your journey to Louisiana Tech. I know when we talked on the phone uh, earlier this week, you made the comment that you originally thought you were going to go to North Texas. How did you end up in Louisiana Tech? Um, I was had signed, was going to go to North Texas, but I wanted uh, to take engineering. And I knew uh, Louisiana Tech had a great engineering school. And uh, through a friend of my father's, uh, he got in touch with Coach IA. We came over and visited. I liked it, and probably one of the best things I ever did in my life. Came to Tech. Well, you mentioned Coach IA already. Obviously, uh, he was known for what he did as a Louisiana Tech football coach. I don't know a lot of people these days realize that he was the golf coach. What was he like as a golf coach? Uh, he was a... Uh, he wasn't hard like he would be in football. He got closer to him. You, uh, he liked to take notes, for you to take notes. Um, but he didn't push on it. Uh, he, he taught just learning to control yourself, to de develop positive attitudes. And he really was a very positive influence on me. 10 years as a PGA professional. Uh, what was it like playing on the PGA Tour back during that time? Um, it wasn't a lot of money, <laughs> like there is today. Uh, you played hard, you stayed, uh, you stayed in the cheapest motels you could, you know, when you started, you were a rabbit, we called them rabbits, you had to qualify. And most of the years I played, I had to qualify. But uh, I did finish in the top hundred the last five years, which was pretty steady. Uh, the money gradually got better. Uh, but it was really a good time in my life. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And the friendships I made with some of the tour players, I still, I'm friends with, like a Lee Trevino to this day, J.C. Sneed, and uh, that's, that's a big part of my life. We talked on the phone the other day. I asked you what may be the most memorable uh, moment of your career, most memorable tournament, whatever it may be. Share that with us. Uh, one of the most memorable things was uh, my last year, uh, I decided to enter the New Orleans Open. The tour was down there. And uh, I went and qualified as an amateur and got in the tournament. And uh, the first round, I shot 73, and I beat Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicholas both. They had 74s. Tech paper the next week hit. Pace beats Nicholas and Palmer. They beat me in the tournament, but I did beat them one round. <laughs> you also shared uh, the story about playing with uh, Arnold Palmer at Quail Valley. Share that with us. Uh, Arnold, of course, uh, he was the big hero with the players and, and the gallery. Um, but I was paired with him at Quail Hollow in North Carolina. Every shot, it was a standing ovation uh, after we hit our shots till we marked our ball. You get chill bumps playing. But I managed to birdie the last hole to beat him one stroke that day, <laughs> which, was, which was a thrill. So did you tell yourself they were clapping for you every time? I don't think they were clapping for me. <laughs> So give us an idea of what your golf game was back when you were a Bulldog and in the PGA. 
I thought the strongest part of mine was iron play. I was a good iron player. Um, I was a long enough driver and a pretty good putter, but my iron play is what stood out, I felt like. A uh, steady iron player. I mentioned 45 years as a teaching professional, uh, such a big part of your career. What led you down the path and, and to be a teacher, and what's that meant to your life? Well, it, uh, I started and became a club professional after the tour, but part of that job is teaching, and uh, I always enjoyed the intricate parts of the game, and it just slowly uh, increased. Uh, I began to work with youngsters, had success, enjoyed it. We seemed to have a bond with each other. Uh, and one led to another. And uh, the last few years, or the last 20 years, I've got more and more with teaching youth. And it's really rewarding to see these kids grow up and make something of themselves and uh, go on, not just a golfer, but as a person. Well, I know you, you've started some of your own um, clinics. I don't know if that's the right word, up in Connecticut and so forth. You're in the Connecticut Hall of Fame. Uh, just talk a little bit about some of those endeavors for us. Uh, for 35 years, I had a, my own golf school in Florida with, with a partner, Ted Shefty, uh, where we would invite our members or our students down to Florida for schools, and we did that for 35 years. We just ended it last year. COVID messed us up for that, too. <laughs> so where, when you were at Louisiana Tech in the early 60s, where did the Bulldogs play? And talk a little bit about how you guys traveled back then. I mean, Matt Terry's got a really nice Sprinter van that they go around in these days. Did you have that back then? Yeah, I've been out there at Squire Creek. We didn't have that. <laughs> <laughs> we traveled in uh, station wagons. And, uh, you know, most of ours were matches pretty close. We did uh, venture down to Baton Rouge, LSU, and Houston, a few places, but most of it was matches that we played or tournaments with it. It was the Gulf States Conference back then. Who were some of your teammates that you remember playing with back then? Are you able to stay in touch with them these days? Uh, I've kind of lost talk. You know, I'm, a, I'm an old guy now. <laughs> but Joe Thomas was one. Uh, John Marks is here tonight. He followed me. He played here at Tech. Uh, but those were a couple of them. Roy Nash played for us. And we were, we were pretty salty. We had a pretty solid team. We had to win four straight conference titles. You must have been. I know you came back for the Bulldogs home tournament a couple of weeks ago out there at Squire Creek and got to spend some time with Matt Terry and these guys. Uh, just talk a little bit about what that meant to you. That's really been fun. And I thank Coach Terry for inviting me back and making me feel so welcome. But I'm uh, very impressed with the program they have here. And we have a young man from Longview Lake Jubit here tonight that uh, he's on the team. And uh, they've got some real talent. They're going to go somewhere. As we, as we wrap up here, just talk a little bit about what you're doing this, these days. Um, these days, I still teach. I have a number of students, but I am slowing down. I don't hit it as far or as straight, but I still love the game, and uh, I'm sure I'll continue teaching, but uh, a big part of my life has been devoted with the, called the first T, and uh, we teach life skills along with teaching kids golf, and we've got over 500 kids in our program right now, five locations, and I still oversee that instruction, and uh, but I'm in the phase of phasing that out. But still love to teach. Well, Mr. Roy, you uh, have obviously made a, a huge impact on a lot of people's lives over the years and uh, very worthy. Congratulations. Let's give it up for our newest Louisiana Tech Hall of Famer, Mr. Roy Pace. Thank you.
Thank goodness for Squire Creek. What a beautiful piece of property that is. Thank you, Lord. Uh, New Orleans is going to be represented now. Bryant Wesco was a fierce competitor, a gifted athlete. He was hanging around a high school meet one day, had never jumped in a meet in his life. Uh, one of the scores says, what's your name? They wrote his name down. Next thing he knew, he was jumping, and he won the meet. <laughs> so uh, some guys have it, some guys don't. He wanted to be a sprinter because everybody's family was a sprinter. Only problem was he wasn't that fast. So he would go over and hang around. He's getting beat by three seconds every hundred, so he goes and hangs around. Uh, a buddy of his that's a jumper, he kind of figures that out. He ended up being a five-time All-American. What about not practicing anything until you're like uh, 15 years old and all of a sudden you're one of the best doing it? He uh, won the 1997 Indoor and Outdoor All-American. He was an All-American in the 1998 Outdoor, the 1999 Indoor, the 2000 Outdoor. So over a period of time, he proved to be really something special. Uh, the second most All-American uh, titles in program history. He was a 16-time all-conference performer, 11-time Sunbelt Conference champion, four-time Sunbelt most outstanding meet performer. To this day, I laugh every time I think about this, he still owns the LaTeX record in indoor and outdoor triple jump. He also holds the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth best times in those <laughs> events. So the guy who's seventh is going to be waiting around a while. Of all his accomplishments, though, he's the most uh, happy his favorite one is helping the Bulldogs win the team title at the 99 Sunbelt Conference Indoor Championships. He's still got a Polaroid of him with tears in his eyes holding the trophy along with his teammates. He earned 26 of LaTeX's 111 points that day. He was a quarter of the team when they won their first uh, conference title since 1990. Once he got to Tech from New Orleans, he went around not just shattering school records by feet, by, uh, he, he shattered them by feet, not just by inches. So please welcome a five-time All-American who loved playing in the sand, Brian Wesco. Richie yet, LeBlanc, I'm, I just, y'all are almost like the exact same height, and I'm just trying to, maybe in the uh, picture a little while we'll see. Hey, welcome, you look great. Do you feel like you could jump a long way today? You look like you could. I've got about one more jump inside me. Yeah, I've got one more inside me. I've got a youngster that's uh, kind of on that journey right now, and the day he's ready, I'll give it to him. Oh, I bet that's fun. <laughs> Your memories of Louisiana Tech and Louisiana Tech track. So my memories here have been fantastic. Um, I recall them as often as I possibly can. This is one of those places that have been really, really special for me um, in shaping the man that I became, um, helping me to shape, you know, the kids that I'm raising today, um, and then ultimately, you know, just making it really, really cool to be a, a bulldog. When you came here, I think you and Gary Stanley, where are you at? Gary, there's Gary Stanley right there from New Orleans. Gary deserves a round of applause. He came and got this guy to win the five All-American titles. He, has, he was from New Orleans. When did you know that y'all may have had something going on that you could trust this guy to help you get better? The first time I met him, um, the stories were so closely intertwined that it made sense that he knew where I was coming from. Um, he uh, kind of understood the passion that I had to be uh, one of the best at what I was doing, and he challenged me to go out there and do that and do it for Louisiana Tech. And um, it was a challenge that was up and down. Um, it was a challenge that, you know, some days I faced it head on. Other days I tried to run from it, but he was there in my corner kind of uh, helping me to be the best version of myself as a track athlete here on campus. So it was really cool, and I definitely appreciate that everything that uh, Coach Gary and then Coach Jackson uh, did for me uh, during the time that I was here. Uh, because once again, uh, those memories, those experiences, those times that we shared um, helped, to, helped to make me who I am today. You like playing basketball in high school. 
Are y'all pretty good? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's all the, all, the, all the family's laughing. Uh, and you want to be a hoot guy. You stood on this very floor, I think, and you and Gary had a conversation. You think I could play basketball? What did he say? He asked me, he's like, you want to play? I was like, yeah, I do, really do. He's like, go stand on the court right now. Let me see if I can find you a ball. He's like, I can't find you one, but this will be the last time you stand on this court. <laughs> Coach Stanley told him, we'll play shirts and skins, but that's all you're going to see. <laughs> So I, I took that and I understood exactly what it meant. Um, I still tried as hard as I can to be that guy. Like I would find a gym regardless of where we were uh, to try to get a couple shots up, try to get, uh, you know, uh, try to relive that dream or get closer to that dream. But ultimately I, I became a track guy when I was here on campus. Well, okay. Did you know before you got here that you were, could be that good? since you were a late bloomer in track and you wanted to run. Yeah, I, I wanted to be a sprinter uh, like my sisters and like my brother and like, you know, my parents before me, but it just didn't work out that way. Like, <laughs> because why? When, when you're There's walking, when you're lining up side by side <laughs> with guys and, you know, before you take three steps, you're like six steps behind. Like, it's, it's tough to be a sprinter if that's your case. And um, I, I wanted to compete and I wanted to be a part of that sport just because it was so uh, closely, I mean, like, it's who we are. You know, every single Wesco that came before me were, was a track athlete, and I wanted to be a part of that. And um, the way that I was a part of that was moving over to the same pit, so. When did you know I could be pretty good at this jumping? From, from day one, mm -hmm. like, I was a competitor. Before I was a jumper, before I was a basketball player, I was a competitor. Like if we were eating a bowl of cereals, I was gonna finish before you. You know, if we were getting dressed in the morning, I was gonna touch the door handle first on the way out the door. Like that's just who I was. So I knew, you know, once I picked it up, um, I was gonna work as hard as I could to be as good as I could. Um, and it, it worked out, so. It's got nothing to do with track and field. What's your cereal of choice? I mean, it's kind of, <laughs> so I'll start. Cinnamon Toast Crunch all day. Oh, it's not bad. <laughs> if you want to add two feet to your jump, <laughs> Cinnamon Toast. Your family, is uh, they're here tonight. They're obviously a, a, a fun bunch. Uh, but they've been with you. They would come to a meet. Every time you had a meet, there used to be a Wesco there. What's yeah. the dynamic of that, and how did that help you? Like, family is the single most important thing to me. Um, it's the part, it's, it's who makes me who I am. Um, and having them in the stands, having them on the field, having them helping to, to work dirt when I'm out practicing, like all of that is a part of the journey. It's a part of the story. And without that, we don't sit on the stage. We don't talk to you. We don't celebrate this moment tonight. And we, we did it together. Like this didn't happen just because of me. It happened because of all of us. Life after track has been fun for you. Uh, obviously still very close to your family. Uh, I, just, Ankles I was looking at the socks, and those are nice. It almost looks just like <laughs> you got little footies. Track guy, track and field guy. Uh, Always ready. Right. <laughs> Life after track. Uh, tell us about that, and tell us about how your coaches and teammates have shaped your life after you left Louisiana Tech. Yeah, so um, I've had so much help, so much support, um, so many people kind of inspiring me to be better today than I was yesterday. And I try to live in that exact same uh, vein for the people that I interact with uh, today. Um, whether it be uh, folks that I'm working with professionally, whether it be student athletes that are coming up um, in the area that I'm, you know, in um, just doing my part to help them, you know, reach their dreams. And, you know, one of the things that I always tell, you know, myself and I tell my kids um, is that dream big. Like dream these big, obscene, lofty dreams and do the work that you need to do in order to, to pursue them. Um, you know, you may achieve, reset, and do it again. Uh, but if you don't, just the work that goes into trying helps you become a better person. Last thing you told me you became, you came here as a kid and you left here as a semi-man. Uh, why is that? Uh, just life lessons. Um, when I got on campus, like I, there weren't very many life experiences for me. Like I was, I was on a basketball court, I was in a classroom, or I was eating cereal. <laughs> um, and that, that was about it. But you know, when I got here, you know, I learned how to cook. I learned how to wash my own clothes. I had learned, you know, that you know, the, I need to make more money than I spend. Like I, I learned those lessons here 
on campus, and, and those are the things that are super, super valuable. And uh, the friendships that I made here were also super important. Like, I've got, you know, handfuls of friends who are still in my life today, and we're still learning lessons together, um, and we're still pushing each other to be better, um, and it, it started here. Well, we can't all be 6'4", we can't all be lean, we can't all have hands like this guy, but we can all eat cinnamon toast crunch. So keep that in mind. Brian Wesco, Louisiana Tech Athletics Hall of Famer, ladies and gentlemen. Five-time All-American. Our next Hall of Famer grew up in Houston, Texas. She prepped at Alston High School. She was a Street and Smiths All-American. She was named the Houston Chronicle Player of the Year as a senior. All she did her senior year was average 40 points a game. She just finished her high school career as the second leading female scorer in the history of Texas high school girls basketball. She's a 1996 business management graduate of Louisiana Tech. She signed with the Lady Textures and Leon Barmore. When she was at Louisiana Tech for her four years, the Lady Textures won 116 games and only lost 17. They were the four-time Sunbelt Conference regular season champions, two-time Sunbelt Conference tournament champions, four NCAA tournament appearances, and she helped lead Louisiana Tech to the 1994 NCAA National Championship game. She ranks 13th in program history with 1,749 points. She scored 29 points in an 83-81 overtime win over number one ranked Connecticut her senior year. We'll talk more about that game. She was a three-time Sunbelt Conference All-League member. She was a 1996 Kodak All-American, that is the all-American team in women's basketball. Only 10 players across the country make that every year. Two-time AP All-American, 1994 Sunbelt Tournament MVP. The list goes on, folks. Four-time Sunbelt All-Tournament team. She was named the most outstanding player in the 1994 NCAA Regional. She was a 1994 and 1996 NCAA All-Regional team recipient. And she is the 11th Lady Texture basketball player ever inducted into the Louisiana Tech Athletics Hall of Fame. And what a year it's been for her. Just a couple of months ago, she was inducted into the Houston ISD Hall of Honor. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for our next Hall of Famer, Ms. Deborah Williams. going through that list it made me tired just reading through it you remember you did all those things did that kind of bring back some memories a little bit a little bit yes well uh i know we got an opportunity to uh to talk the other day what's it like being back here not only being inducted in louisiana tech athletics hall of fame but you're being able to do it at a place that you called home that you played at for four years in this facility it feel amazing um i'm glad to be back here i'm glad to be amongst all the honorees that this evening, except in this award. But I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Coach Barmore, my Lady Texture teammates, my family, my friends. But it's always great to come back. I try to get back as much as possible, be a part of the program. I haven't been back since uh, 2017. 
Uh, it was an unfortunate situation. I lost one of my teammates. Um, but it's glad to be back and it's glad to be on this court except in this honor. You look up in these rafters right here and all these banners, and uh, you helped put a number of those up there, obviously the 19, and we'll talk more about the 1994 championship team, but uh, when you look up there and you just think of what you were a part of, uh, you know, what does that mean to you? It means everything. It means everything. Um, looking back, being able to come to Louisiana Tech, I had a chance to go to any university in the top 25, any school in America. I was recruited by some of the up other great schools, uh, Tennessee, uh, Stanford, Harvard, Yale. I could have went anywhere, but uh, I chose to come here, and I, I chose to come here because Coach Baltimore had a style of recruiting that was different from everyone else. When I stepped here on, on the court, uh, came in uh, from a recruiting trip, uh, Coach Baltimore uh, said, Deborah, I'm gonna tell you this, the program speaks for itself. Uh, he asked me, what do you want to do in life? What do you want to major in? And I said, business. So if I was here on campus 36 hours, 35 of those hours was getting to know the people in the school of business. And that's something that's very special to me. You had an opportunity this afternoon, from what I understand, you went over and uh, joined the Lady Textures in practice, and I think Coach Barmore was over there as well. Uh, what was it like getting to, to visit with Coach Barmore? And I know you addressed the team. What was your message to them? My message, my message was them is to pay, uh, play hard. Every day you put on that uniform, play hard. There's a lot of young ladies who would love to put on this uniform. This is a very special uniform to put on. Not everybody can wear this uniform. It don't matter how good you think you are, you have to be something special to wear uh, a lady takes a uniform. And I was just telling them, you know, uh, it's, it's a team game. You know, you gotta play hard and, and you gotta play with each other, help each other on the court, off the court. Um, and just, you know, go out there and compete. When we talked the other day, I asked you what your most memorable game was. And I, I guess in a way it surprised me because you mentioned a game that Louisiana Tech lost, but it was the 1994 National Championship game. Uh, what stood out about that game that, that makes that number one on your list? Well, it was the journey getting there. Uh, we was in the Midwest regions uh, with Tennessee, Alabama, some schools we had played early in the year. Uh, and <sighs> Tennessee wiped us, uh, they spanked us up in Knoxville. Uh, and, you know, we had an opportunity to come back and, and play them in the Midwest regions, regionals. And we was in the line for buffet, getting ready to eat, uh, to celebrate the, you know, the tournament. And one of the players, Nikki Caldwell, a gentleman was standing behind her. And uh, he asked her, um, what do you know about Louisiana Tech? And she kind of made a remark that said, uh, uh, we played them early in the year. No, I don't think we'll have a problem with them. So I turned to my <laughs> two of my teammates, Pam Thompson and Vicki Johnson, and asked them, hey, did y'all hear that? And uh, Pam was like, uh, Vic was like, no, nah, what's she saying? I, I repeated it. So to me, I took it personal. I took it personal, you know. Uh, <laughs> I have to give them their credit. They whooped us up in Knoxville, probably about 30-something Beat points. you by 33 in Knoxville that year, and you came back and beat them in the NCAA tournament. You didn't have to say that. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, yes, they beat us about 33 points. So I had a chip on my shoulder, and I, 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 I think I took it personally. I came back out, and I wanted to get them. I wanted to get them. We played Alabama, they beat us too. So it was two teams that we had played early on in the They beat you by 22, by the way. <laughs> but we got them when it counts. You got them when it counts. That's exactly right. We talked a little bit. I mentioned uh, the 83-81 overtime win over number one ranked Connecticut. Uh, that was the State Farm Classic, your senior year. That was played in Knoxville. What do you remember about that game? <sighs> Connecticut, they was the number one team, I think, in the nation at the time they had ran. They was undefeated. Uh, I think they had just won a national champ, won their first national champ or something uh, to that sort. And... We, we came against them, we came up against them, and I was ready for it. Those are the games that I love the most. You know, um, when you get to leave it all out there, it's blood, sweat, and tears, we fall to the end. And what made that game so special, because I had the opportunity to win the game at the end on the free throw line, and I missed both free throws. So it was like, ah, uh, 
and I went back to the huddle and I told my teams, this one's on me. I got us. I got us. So we came back out and I had to, you know, redeem myself. And I owed it to my team, you know, to do that because I should have stepped up there and knocked down those two free throws. But we got them in the count. So I looked up the box score because I was interested. And uh, in overtime, Texters trailed 79-75 with just two minutes to play. You hit back-to-back three-pointers, and then you made a layup with five seconds left that won it. So I would say you redeemed yourself for sure. Thank you. You talked about Coach Baldwin. It's always good to beat Gino, I can tell you that. You talked a little bit about Coach Barmore, what it was like playing for Coach. Man, um, it, playing for Coach Barmore was amazing. It was, when they, when they say college is the best, some of the best years of your life, Coach Barmore, he made it some of the best years of my life. Uh, he. Like the gentleman said before me, he probably came in as a boy and he left half man. I came in as a girl and I left out of here uh, being a woman. He taught me a lot. And some of the things that he taught us is always, if what you're gonna do it, do it, do the best. Leave it out there on the floor. Never leave uh, 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 nothing undone. Don't regret anything. And that's something that I did in my career. That's something I did after my basketball career. And that's something I still do and I teach to my nephew now that I'm helping raise is, you know, give it your all, give it 100. Never leave nothing undone. Don't start nothing that you can't finish. Well, talk a little bit about how you've used that in your adult life and what you're doing now. Right now, uh, right now like I said, I'm raising my, uh, my nephew. Uh, I use it in my life right now. I, run my, I have my own. Uh, business and it's just I, 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 I go out there and I do my best um, do my best give it give it my all and like everything sometimes you fall short in something but I know how to get up and brush myself off and keep going all right you didn't fall short very often ladies and gentlemen our next Louisiana Tech Athletics Hall of Famer Miss Deborah Williams <laughs> Anybody need a juice box or a banana? Anybody cramping? Okay, we're going to push through then. Our last inductee is kind of used to being last. He, uh, he's, he's so beautiful, but he just, nobody noticed for a long time. He had to prove to him that he played in the NFL for 14 years and he could be an all-whack player. Uh, nothing easier given to him. He was a walk-on at Tech. Then he had to walk on basically in the NFL. Even when at Tech, he asked his future wife out, he had to walk on again. She wouldn't have anything to do with it. But God love him, he kept trying. What a stud. Uh, he was starring for the Bayou Lafouche Raiders. No one questioned his size back then. Of course, he's five years old, so who would? Um, he led his team a substitute high to back-to-back uh, titles. They were 13-1. and one. They got beat by Curtis both years. Really good team, supremely gifted athlete, a hard worker. Um, again, he became all whack, all pro, unsigned. Finally got on the Packers practice squad. He went from there to Lambeau to all pro to the Super Bowl champ. Final inductee from the class of 2021, Tremont Williams, ladies and gentlemen.
Zach slammed out. You know, I had it on and took it off. Did have blue shoes instead of red, and that would have been embarrassing. Look sharp, my man. Appreciate it, man. Malcolm tried to steal that jacket. On. <laughs> okay, look, uh, your just your memories of Tech football, which didn't start, of course, until you were a year here, because Tremont watched the. He came from Napoleonville, and he watched the first season from the stands. He played flag football. Your team made it to the championship game. Of course, got beat because you were terrible. Uh, but then, then in the spring, he showed up and said, let me try out. The coach said, oh, my God, are you academically eligible? Trey Monk said, yeah, I've been going to class. And then he became all conference. Your memories of the, of the team? My memories um, was really good memories. As you said, um, I came uh, here to Tech as a student, first and foremost. So I got a chance to experience just, be, just being a student here at Tech. Um, then I finally walked on, not my first year, but my second year. And um, I went to Coach Bicknell's office and, and told him that I wanted to walk onto the team. And he looked me in my eye and he said, is, is it worth it? <laughs> he said, is it worth it? And I said, yeah. I said, I'm, I'm a pretty good athlete. So I, if you can show me what I can play, I can do anything. So nonetheless, he told me to come out. And I literally came out um, for the spring. And now I had to choose between wide receiver or cornerback. And the offense was top five um, at that time, and it had so many receivers. And I was like, man, I don't know if I'm going to make it at receiver. So let me go to the defensive side of the ball. And, um, and I did that and um, kind of got into the third string rotation from that uh, point. And then, truthfully, just kind of start making a name for myself right away. Um, I didn't know if I was going to get a fair shot. I didn't know if the coaches was going to just look at me as, oh, man, this kid right here, I mean, he's just a, he's just a walk-on. I didn't know if that's how they was going to just continue to look at me. But I was driven, man. I was driven to be noticed. I didn't get noticed coming out of high school for whatever reason. And that always left a chip on my shoulder. And um, I was willing to put my ability against anybody's ability out there, no matter what time it was a day. If you want to play football out in the streets, we can go do that. Right now, still. <laughs> so, so that was that was me, man. I was I was willing to put it all out on the line, um, and my experience here at Tech, I mean, it was great. Uh, I came out and uh, did it well. Yeah, you told me you had a little dog in you. What did that mean? <laughs> <laughs> so that dog means okay. So I can play any sport it is, right? So I can play any sport it is. When I when I played high school, when I played basketball. Coach used to put me on like six eight and six nine guys, man, because he said I had dog. So I was like, Coach, what you mean, man? What, what you mean I got dog? He was like, Man, I know they ain't gonna be able to back you down in the post. You ain't gonna do that because you ain't finna let them do that. I said, You know what, Coach? You right. I said, <laughs> I said, You know what, Coach? You right. So nonetheless, man, I, I, just from having to fight all the time, I did develop that dog, and um, and I still have it today, man. Um, as I said. We can go out in the parking lot right now, and I'm willing to fight for anything right now. <laughs> he's not cocky. He's just he's sure of what he's done. Again, he had to walk on for everything. Can y'all give this class of 2021 a hand? I mean, it's like Richie and Roy, uh, Deborah, uh, Brian. They all got dog. I mean, what we asked them to do is unbelievable. I mean, they just... Hey, how you doing? But you have no idea what these people have been through and the passion they bring to it. It's just fascinating to me what people are able to do. Okay, the hardest dude to cover in the NFL for you? I get that question so much. Really? It's, it's, it's tougher than what people think it is. Um, I was in the division with, with Calvin Johnson my whole career. Oh, he's good. I was in the division with Calvin Johnson my whole career, and I had to travel with him. So when I was in the league, I was a travel corner. I was considered the best corner on my team, so whoever the best guy was on the other team, I had to go with him. And I had to, my first snaps in the NFL was against Calvin Johnson. A big Trust guy. Me, like, and I was, when I first lined up, I was kind of nervous. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was, <laughs> was kind of nervous. But I got out there, man, and, and, and they saw me running out on the field. Um, a backup corner at the time, I was behind Charles Wilson and Al Harris, um, two, two elite guys. And um, I came out there, quarterback saw me running out on the field, and that was, that was a 
light bulb in my head. <laughs> so um, nonetheless, they came right after me. They came right after me, Calvin Johnson. Um, three plays in a row. I broke up all three passes. Broke up all three passes and um, came to the sideline and the coaches started talking. It was like, man, we got to get this kid in the rotation. And nonetheless, um, I always kind of kept that with me. That kind of built my confidence a little bit. Um, but I had to fight Calvin for the next 10 years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I had some wins and he had some wins. You know, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. But I would have to say Calvin probably is it is one of the best, but I, I, I went up against so many. It's hard to say. What, in 14 years of the league, you would go up against yeah. a bunch. And it's Green Bay. I think y'all were in the playoffs seven out of the eight years you were there, something like that. Um, when you were at Tech, what's your favorite football, one of your favorite football memories? I think somebody just posted it on Twitter uh, the other day. I think Tech posted it on Twitter. It was against Fresno State. Um, they were number 17 mm -hmm. in the country at that time. And um, I can remember before the game, um, the, uh, the guys for, for Fresno came and, and, and they started running through our drills. We were doing our drills and they started running through our drills and we broke out into a big fight. Big fight before the game. So now when the game starts, we like, man, we got to get at these boys, man. They, they came here and they disrespect us on our field. So nonetheless, um, we kind of got off to a slow start, um, but, but we start to pick up. And I think we scored two touchdowns in a row. We got an interception, um, and we scored another touchdown. I think we tied the game up, two-point conversion. And um, we went into the lead. And um, I can remember um, coach calling cover two. We were sitting in cover two, and I was on the cover two side. And I can see the quarterback throwing out my way, and I broke on the pass, and I intercepted. And it was for the game winner. It was maybe 40-something seconds left, mm -hmm. but all we had to do was come out and yell the ball. Um, crowd went crazy. Everybody came came out and, and tore down the goal folks. Back in the whack days. <laughs> Always fun to be Fresno back in the whack days. Okay, a couple more things. We'll wrap it up. I appreciate you good at football. That's awesome that you were all pro. That's cool and whatever, and that you're a sharp dresser. <laughs> the best thing you've ever done was Mary Shannon. So how did that happen? Because at first she said net. So how did you, you told me it was a lot harder than playing cornerback, was trying to get a play with this, the player of the year in the whack. Man, it was, man. <laughs> man, she, man, she wouldn't let me be great for nothing, man. She, <laughs> she, she wouldn't let me be great, man. But um, I eventually, I eventually got it. I kept going. I, I wasn't the type of guy to, to, to go after girls. So that was like a, that was hard for me, man. but she made me work for it. She made me work. She made me work. But I'm, I'm telling y'all though, I mean, it was all God, man. It was all God being able to to catch her. Um, she's she's really my foundation. She's really my rock. Um, her, the way she take care of the kids. I don't think God could have blessed me with a better wife. Um, me having a career that I had 15 years, you had to have somebody who understood what you were going through on a day-to-day -day base. And as you guys know, I mean, she was a uh, player of the year herself here at La Tech. So she knew exactly what I was going through, um, which made it easy for me. She took care of everything at the house, and she even understood the game of football, what I was doing. You don't get many wives who can do that. You don't get many people who can do that. Um, when I come home, I couldn't lie to her. I couldn't lie to her. Babe, what coverage y'all was in? Oh, we was in cover two. Nah, y'all was in cover three. <laughs> y'all was in cover three. But she knows everything, and you, and you got to respect that. Um, you got to love that, that your wife supports you that much, that she loves what you do. She take it to heart, and, um, and I take her to heart. Well, let's have, wrap it up with this, Jermaine. Uh, you told me that tech is kind of where your life started. So tell us what you meant by that. I mean, my wife got my wife from here. Me and my best friend, who's here, another alum uh, of La Tech, uh, Brandon Wilson, um, he, he came here with me. We, we had this deal. We was going to come here, and we was going to get our engineering degrees, and we was going to take on the engineering world by storm. That's what we was going to do. But we got here, and they started going through the, through the schedule, through the math, 
Captain was one, Captain was two. I was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good on that one right there. <laughs> Shit, y'all, y'all tripping. I'm good on that one there. <laughs> point, point me to another direction. <laughs> So I decided to go computer information system, and that, that was even before I even started playing football. And um, I eventually switched to sociology. But um, my whole life began here. Um, I got my wife, I got my kids now. Um, T2 and Trinity. T2 just made 12, Trinity is 10 years old. Um, both are real good athletes. They both just won Junior Olympics in track this year. Um, my daughter, 100, 400, long jump. My son, long jump. Four by four, four by one. Um, uh, the long jump, he, he come and get you. Triple jump too. <laughs> but but man, it's it's fun. Um, I get a chance to coach them every day now. Um, football, basketball, and track. I'm I'm I'm, I'm their coach, and um, it's been amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, all pro corner and the fourth best athlete in his family, <laughs> Ron Williams. Everybody. If I could get the other four inductees to come back up here, bring your uh, bring your plaque, please. And uh, we're going to wrap things up. We want to make sure you're up here so we can get some group photos uh, once we are done. But uh, what a night, folks. Uh, what a privilege to be here. Um, it's been a lot of fun. What a great way to celebrate five tremendous victories uh, by the, these five very very special people. Uh, before we play the Louisiana Tech alma mater to close things out, I want to uh, thank the members of the Louisiana Tech Hall of Fame committee. Uh, I want to thank the Regal Blues. They were the ones that greeted you guys at the door tonight and helped direct you uh, to where you want to be. I want to thank Aramark for their help with the food and the beverage tonight. Uh, there's a lot of members who are on the Hall of Fame event planning committee. I'm not going to go through the list. You know who you are, but there was a lot of love and hard work put in tonight to make this weekend very special for these inductees. So thanks uh, for all of you. And, and most of all, thank you guys, all of y'all who have shown up tonight uh, to enjoy uh, this very special night with these very, very special people. Following our alma mater, we're going to take some photos up here. Once we're done with that, we're going to release them. You guys can stick around, take photos, enjoy yourself. But if you would rise uh, as we culminate this wonderful evening uh, with the playing of the Louisiana Tech alma mater. Thanks again, everybody. Kick off tomorrow night, 6 o'clock from Joe High Stadium. We'll recognize all five of them on the field at halftime. Y'all have a great evening. Safe drive home. Thanks again for coming out.